Okay, second to last talk. Uh, Tad Kohler, is, uh, he's actually been on the sysadmin side maintaining our, our cluster for a while, but he's recently joined the actual development team. Um, and when he joined the development team, he immediately proceeded to go back to work on the cluster. So uh, we actually have a lot of our application folks who aren't expert users on how to set up Python and compile things on clusters. Shocking, I know, for a lot of you guys out there. Um, so Tad spent a bunch of time like fixing it and coming up with a, I guess, a bash script, right? Sort of, yeah. Shell script, some kind of script. I'm calling it a script. He doesn't like that word. <laughs> uh, to do the install. So you just log into the cluster and call this script, and it installs everything. Um, and I guess we thought this would be pretty easy, and it wasn't that easy to, to like write this script. Um, even after Santiago sent us some pull requests that made our install installation process easier. Still was tricky. So Tad's going to... Talk about that. All right, so uh, recently the, uh, the the dev team wanted to put more time in developing MPI parallel processing using our, our Linux cluster and wanted a quick way, like, like Justin was saying, to get the environment set up without having to hunt down um, multiple libraries and individual, individual packages and installing them and hoping everything uh, worked, worked well together. Um, and there were already some uh, packages installed and, and in use, so it seemed like it would be a quick job, maybe in like an hour tops. Um, surprisingly, it ended up taking several days with uh, back and forth testing, but we learned a few lessons along the way, and I'm going to talk about the additional software we installed on the cluster and the configuration script and the hurdles that we overcame. Okay. Several days, is that the, uh, the time you tell me it took? How long did it really take? No, that's what, that's what okay. it took. <laughs> um, so, uh, selecting an MPI library was important. Um, it needed to integrate with our uh, Slurm job scheduler and run reliably and fast with our Infinibian hardware. Um, an, an older version of OpenMPI was already in use, and we tried to upgrade to the newest version of that. Um, but New versions of OpenMPI default to the optimized UCX transport instead of uh, OpenIB, which was in use before, and you know, OpenIB is now deprecated. Uh, that, that sounded like a good thing at first, but we ran in, into problems because we have um, two generations of Mellanax hardware in the cluster, and they didn't want to talk to each other over, over UCX. And it's, it's possible to configure UCS, UCX to work in that situation, but uh, the performance benchmark uh, worse than, than OpenIB did. Um, so instead of continuing to spend time on getting OpenMPI to work, we decided to try um, other MPI libraries, uh, starting with vanilla MPish. Uh, it, it turned out MPish doesn't support InfiniBand well yet, but MVAPish 2 does. Um, our, our Linux cluster runs uh, CentOS 7 as its OS, and CentOS 7 doesn't have the newest version of Python or, or Python packages in the uh, official repo. Um, the easiest solution to this was to install Anaconda 3 in a location that was accessible to the, the whole team. Uh, <clears throat> so it, I'm sure most people know what Anaconda is. It, it enables um, multiple Python environments for each user and was already popular with, with the team on their own systems. Um, so users logging into the cluster now get instructions for setting up and using Anaconda in the, in the MOTD uh, script. Um, and a final package we in installed uh, for the environment was a local copy of, of the uh, PyOps sparse repository. Um, so <clears throat> a few more packages were nice to have, like uh, FastX. It, it's you know nice to develop on Linux with a full uh, KDE or, or GNOME um, virtual session, but Unfortunately, you normally do this over VNC, and, and that's pretty slow, especially when you're teleworking. And it's difficult to manage uh, multiple users with that due to, due to port conflicts. Um, FastX is similar to VNC, but accelerated, and it works over SSH and doesn't have any problem with uh, multiple users. Um, so the SSH support, support is important for us because we need to use our NASA smart cards for, for authentication. Um, and there's a, there's a web-based version of FastX uh, configuration also, but we're not currently using that. Um, and I, I personally use uh, Visual Studio Code Editor and, and some of the other team members, and there's a version of Linux for that that we've installed as well. 
Um, so <clears throat> the tool that sets up the OpenMDAO dev development environment is called uh, init-om. It's, it's not a normal shell script, it's configured as a bash shell function. So that makes it easier to manipulate the environment in the current shell and it works around some, some problems that Anaconda has when it's being uh, run from a script. Um, that, that function is defined during login when it's sourced from a file in etsy profile.d, but it could also be uh, defined in a user's own, own login files. So uh, here's, what, here's what that does. Um, first, it just gets the uh, conda environment name from the command line and then sets the tempter shell variable. Um, this, is, this is needed for our cluster because uh, slash temp and slash uh, var temp uh, forbid running executables in them um, due to our uh, system and security plan requirements, and that breaks uh, the pip, breaks pip install. Um, in place of in place of that, we have a uh, slash t directory that's local to every host with a separate subdirectory for every user. So that's what that's what the tempter uh, variable is set to. Um, next, uh, init om uses uh, cons is to install every pack, every Python package it can, and then copies a small script to the new environment's activation directory. Um, that script runs every time the environment is is activated. It, it, all it does is uh, load the mvapage2 module and sets the temp ver, tempter variable, like I was uh, saying before. Um, <clears throat> then the uh, the Conda environment is actually activated, and init-om uses pip to install the remaining dependencies, such as PETC and MPI uh, for Pi and, and others. Um, did I miss something there? <clears throat> so here are the, some of the issues they re, uh, ran into uh, during testing. Um, the first version of init-om was just a, a few lines that did some minimal um, package installs, and this, the early testing was performed by Brett, who, who was a longtime user of the cluster and had already had a, an established um, environment. Unfortunately, he ran into some problems right away. Uh, he, was, he was setting his tempter and path shell variables in, in his login script, which was overriding the system settings and, and causing uh, pip install to fail. So that was the reason that we put tempter into the, uh, the cond activation script. Uh, we also removed the uh, the path setting from his login script. Next, his um, the pip installs were complaining that they couldn't create a cache directory. Um, that was because he already had one, and we fixed that just by using a no cache uh, dir option with with pip, with pip install. Um, the the biggest problem we ran into that was he was getting a a wrong shared lib, um, he was getting a symbol not found error when he was actually trying to, to run in the, in the new environment. Um, so that was because the a wrong shared li uh, library was, was being linked and we couldn't ever find the source of that problem. And what we ended up doing was just um, renaming his home directory and having him log in with a fresh one, um, which, which fixed it and it would have fixed all the other problems too, but that was just too heavy handed to, to try to resolve the other problems with it. And, um, to begin with. Um, <clears throat> so finally, we had to overcome some hurdles with running test flow, which executes the uh, OpenMDAO test suite. Uh, typically, MPI-based programs are in invo invoked by running MPI run with, with some options and then the command name, but uh, test flow calls MPI run itself. This caused a problem because Mvapish 2 didn't install um, MPI run. It, it doesn't have, it didn't install you know, an executable called MPI run because it uses the srun command that uh, comes with the slurm scheduler. And as a result, test flow kept failing M every MPI test. Uh, the simple solution was just to make a small script called MPI run that invoked srun. And another problem we had was an error in the system called pthread mutex destroy um, device or resource busy. We were able to fix that by setting the MV2 enable affinity shell variable to zero, uh, which prevented mvapage2 from trying to manage a processor binding itself and, and left that to slurm. Um, so in conclusion, we just, you know, uh, in NOM and the clustering environment are generally working well and 
uh, all dependencies are installed and, and there are uh, different options for interactive use. It's uh, <coughs> fairly simple to run an NOM, wait a few minutes and have a complete dev environment available. And uh, that's, all I, that's all I've got.